Hello everyone, today in our series of Docflix's KOL interviews, we have with us Dr. MC Misra, who is the director of AIMS New Delhi. Dr. Misra is known for the development of first ever trauma center in South Asia. Among many awards conferred to him, Dr. Misra has received the prestigious PC Roy Award and is the recipient of various fellowships from many national and international institutions. Thank you, sir, for this interview. Thank you. Dr. Misra, there has been a lot of discussion about implementation of uniform medical education in the country and there is a lot of variation in different courses that are being taught. So, what is your opinion on this? Yeah, the country has uh, almost 400 plus medical schools and uh, naturally the standards are variable from state to state, from medical college to medical college, from one institution to other institution. And uh, there is a huge need for standardization of undergraduate as well as postgraduate medical education. And uh, because of the variable standards, uh, that is uh, important. Now, when we say that, then uh, uh, it is also pertinent to mention that uh, we have uh, students are admitted in, so far they were in government medical colleges by way of uh, entrance examination. Uh, but uh, in private colleges were holding their own examination system. So, what has happened now by the implementation of NEET, uh, you must have heard about NEET, the National Eligibility Come Entrance Test, uh, which Supreme Court has uh, make it mandatory for private colleges also, it will definitely bring about uniformity in at least eligibility for these students to come into medical colleges and I am sure when uh, the students getting admitted for undergraduate course through a common entrance then they, they automatically they are, there is a certain level already achieved and further outcome of this for postgraduate education would further improve. So, I think it is a need of the hour that need is implemented and it has been implemented from this year for private colleges. Uh, certain state governments had asked for exemption this year and they will also be on board next year. So, I think it is a, it's a good step in the right direction. But only few government organizations are performing transplants in India. So, what about training of surgeons in this area and are there any specific courses to get training in this area? Yeah, but it is a very pertinent question that uh, transplantation of human organs is taking place in select institutions and there are large number of states in India where no transplant facility is available in government sector and uh, I feel that that must be available in uh, most institutions uh, because what is happening today that transplants are taking place in uh, corporate sector more, private hospitals more than government hospitals and transplantation is a cost intensive uh, procedure. So, there are lot of poor and uh, persons coming from low income groups are not able to afford the transplantation. So, that is one reason that uh, you are right that we should do the capacity building uh, of uh, surgeons and the other specialists like nephrologists, hepatologists and uh, it is a teamwork. So, we need a specialized nursing care for transplant. We also need uh, psychologists to deal with transplant patients and pre-transplant, post-transplant and also the and in India it is also important to understand that majority of the transplantation program is running on live donation. Whether it is kidney transplant which is solely on live donation, liver transplant almost 100 percent is uh, on live donation because the cadaveric donation is far and few. Uh, it is better in South India, but uh, as, as compared to North India, but it is, sti is still appallingly low conversion of donations from brain death to organ donation. So, there are number of factors and uh, I agree that uh, there should be capacity building and in this direction I am happy to share with you 
that at AIMS we have approved an academic course uh, of fellowship in kidney transplant. So I am it's, it's a, a step forward to answer your question that we are starting specialized courses for transplant. So can you give us some insight on green corridor and what are some policies that or some steps that need to be taken for better implementation of? Green corridor is something when there is organ is being transported from one city to another city like Jaipur to Delhi or Agra to uh, Delhi or Chandigarh to Delhi and from airport to the hospital in that particular city. For I will give you two examples. Uh, green corridor was created when we brought one heart from Indore, one heart from Pune, one heart from Chandigarh. So from airport to Ames, the green corridor is something which uh, the Delhi traffic police uh, does that, they, they provide a escort and uh, the, without any uh, stop, the organ is put in that ambulance and then it goes to the green corridor where not other traffic is not allowed. So that helps reaching the organ from airport to the hospital quickly because time is of essence. And also in the other city like Pune, in Indore, in Chandigarh. So the same thing there also the green corridor from this hospital to the airport and then airport to the hospital in Delhi or any respective city. So it's important to save time. So that the because the organ has a limited life, some few hours, six hours we should be putting in the organ. So it should not take eight hours because the organ otherwise will start uh, getting spoiled. So that's the reason green corridor is essential for organ transplant program. So you have done a lot of work in laparoscopy. So how can someone interested in minimally invasive surgery start practicing in this field? And are there any training programs available? Again, a, a pertinent question that uh, we have now laparoscopic surgery is on the scene for last 25 years. And when I started laparoscopy in 91, there was no training opportunities for me to learn. What I, I did, I went to Europe, visited two centers, saw at that time what surgeons were doing, well, removal of the gallbladder because that was the only procedure done at that time and there was no other hands-on training available. But fortunately now, we have established laparoscopic training center at All India Institute of Medical Sciences and there are other centers also which are imparting uh, hands-on training in laparoscopic procedures. So there are training opportunities now available. So any general surgeon now during the course of his study, doing post-graduation and also while doing senior residency does get exposure to laparoscopy by assisting consultants in government setup also and in private setup also and with some more training they all can begin doing this laparoscopic surgery safely for the patient. So does AIMS provide training in surgical specialties to anyone who enrolls and are there any prerequisites? The, the, to get enrolled in a postgraduate course uh, whether it's postgraduate or post postgraduate course like DM and MCH program there is a competitive examination and uh, doctors will have to take that, this exam and then get selected to these courses. So there is no preference that I accept that there are some sponsored seats also. These sponsored seats are largely for those being sponsored from government, other government institutions like people coming from uh, Chhattisgarh, people coming from JNK, people coming from Northeast. Uh, if those facilities are not available within the states, the state governments sponsor these people or people coming from army, navy, air force, uh, the doctors working there, they can come and do the post graduation, they can do the DMMCH uh, in these institutions, national in institutions of national importance like PGI Chandigarh, AIMS and so on. So, as we know, AIMS New Delhi is a very busy institution. So, how do you ensure the timely and efficient treatment of each and every patient? Yeah, that's uh, you are right uh, that we uh, get almost three and a half million patients in our outpatients every year. And in 2015, uh, we saw these many patients in our outpatient in the main hospital as well as other centers. 
so uh, patients come from far off places they far and wide from within the country outside the country they come with lot of hope and faith in the system uh, so what our job is to make the experience of these patients friendly in the hospital at least they should get the consultation uh, without much delay towards uh, achieving this what we have done we have now developed a online registration system uh, and almost 35 lakhs patients have already benefited by taking online appointment uh, for consultation and what i feel the kind of uh, infrastructure now is that place at all india institute uh, what we call we have created a patient reception center and there are separate queues for those who have taken prior appointment so there is a fast track for them and they can come and immediately they can get the card and whatever and they go in the respective opds so what patient comes and they are made to sit in the patient reception center then from there very quickly the patient uh, patients are moved to the waiting halls various waiting halls which have been created for medical opd pediatric opd and all other opds and then in batches they are taken to the respective floor of the outpatient so they need not to wait and crowd outside the consultation chambers which used to happen before so we have got very encouraging feedback from our patients and patients not coming from any section of society and uh, even one of my friend told me that he took a cab from uh, new delhi railway station to come to me and on way he was Uh, he mentioned that the things have uh, significantly improved at aims and this is what they have done so we feel very satisfied and happy that whatever we are doing for the benefit of the population at large is working and people are appreciating it so it is a great initiative and i think a lot of other government hospitals should follow it absolutely the central government um, and ministry of health has uh, initiated to roll this out in other central government hospitals so we are at it so you have been associated with aims for quite some time now actually quite a long time now almost precisely 36 years so can you narrate some of your experience of working at aims i can only say that i have not seen an institution like this neither in india nor abroad where you patients come with so much uh, hope faith and trust so what our challenge is to keep maintaining this for our patients and the beauty of aims i would say is what i have seen over a period of time that the same expert or same faculty looks after the prime minister of the country and a common man from the street so this kind of a system where do you get Uh, and this is a fantastic system that anybody who doesn't have money will also get the same quality of treatment uh, and the one who can afford also gets the same quality of treatment you get, get a fair opinion uh, about your problem we are not persuaded by commercial uh, interest which is happening in healthcare to some extent i would not say that it is to large extent but to some extent Uh, commercialization has crept into the healthcare system because profits have become a uh, uh, order of the day and uh, that is in a way good also because there is a space for those who can afford high class high uh, environment treatment uh, so it's it's okay for them although quality of treatment expertise sometimes is not guaranteed even if you pay So as you know docplex is an online professional networking for doctors in india so how do you think doctors can use this platform to gain and share knowledge no i think doctors are using it i see because i do get mails from docplexes every day and the doctors are using they are discussing their issues they are also pointing out some rare findings in some patient uh, in one odd case i also shared uh, uh, in on that so and they are discussing the problems what they one can face uh, in uh, while looking after the patient so i think it's a good online platform uh, which i think people must use to its potential uh, that is what is required and i compliment the docplexes for taking this initiative thank you so much sir thank you for thank this you. interview thank you so much
To stay updated on our latest scale videos and interviews, please follow us on Twitter, like us on our Facebook page, and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Happy dog flexing!